Have you ever questioned the very fabric of reality? Like, what if everything you see, feel, experience, it's all just a simulation? It sounds like something straight out of the matrix, right? But what if I told you there are brilliant minds out there, people like Elon Musk, scientists, philosophers, who believe this might not be as crazy as it sounds? We're about to dive deep into the simulation theory, a mind-bending concept that suggests our universe is a hyper-realistic computer program. We're talking about the possibility that some highly advanced civilization is behind the curtain, running our lives like lines of code. Buckle up, because we're about to explore 10 individuals who claim to have found glitches in the system, evidence that suggests we might be living in a digital world. Let's kick things off with Elon Musk, the guy who's shooting for Mars and revolutionizing the way we drive. Musk has openly talked about his belief that there's a high probability we're living in a simulation. He's pointed out the incredible advancements in video game technology, how we've gone from Pong to virtual reality that's almost indistinguishable from reality itself. Musk argues that if technology keeps progressing at this rate, it's only a matter of time before we're able to create simulations that are indistinguishable from reality. And if we can do it, who's to say some other civilization hasn't already done it, creating the world we know as our own? It's a trippy thought, man. Musk even suggests that the reason we haven't encountered any advanced alien civilizations yet is because we're probably just a simulation, and they're not interested in interacting with us. Next up, we've got Nick Bostrom, a philosopher at Oxford University. This guy's known for his mind-blowing simulation argument, Bostrom's argument goes something like this. If there are civilizations out there that are way more advanced than us, and they have the ability to create simulations, then there are probably a ton of simulations out there. I mean, think about it. If we can barely handle social media, imagine what a civilization a million years ahead of us could do. Bostrom suggests that the number of simulated universes would vastly outnumber the number of real universes. So, statistically speaking, there's a higher chance that we're in one of the simulations rather than the original. It's like that time you thought you bought a real Rolex, but it turned out to be a really good fake. Except in this case, we're talking about the very nature of our existence. Now let's bring in the big guns, Neil deGrasse Tyson, everyone's favorite astrophysicist. Tyson's a tough cookie to crack. He doesn't just jump on any bandwagon. While he doesn't outright dismiss the simulation theory, he approaches it with his signature scientific skepticism. Tyson argues that proving we're in a simulation would require finding undeniable evidence of its limitations, like glitches in the laws of physics or limitations in the fabric of space-time. He compares it to a video game character trying to find evidence of the programmer outside the game world. It's a tough challenge for sure, but Tyson admits it's not entirely impossible. He's all about the evidence, and until we find that smoking gun, he's keeping an open mind. Chapter 4. Rizwan Verk Decoding the Simulation Now let's talk about Rizwan Verk, a Silicon Valley entrepreneur and author of The Simulation Hypothesis. Verk's book dives deep into the technological and philosophical aspects of the simulation theory. He argues that advancements in virtual reality artificial intelligence, and quantum computing are all pointing towards the possibility of simulated worlds. Verk believes that we're getting closer and closer to creating simulations that are indistinguishable from reality, and he sees this as evidence that we might already be in one. He even suggests that the glitches people report experiencing, like deja vu or objects disappearing and reappearing, could be signs of a simulated reality. It's like when your computer freezes or your game lags, those little hiccups could be the matrix revealing itself. Chapter 5. Philip K. Dick, The Sci-Fi Prophet Hold on to your hats, folks, because we're about to enter the mind of Philip K. Dick, the legendary science fiction writer who gave us Blade Runner and a scanner darkly. Dick was way ahead of his time, exploring themes of simulated realities and artificial intelligence long before they became mainstream. He famously said, Reality is that which, when you stop believing in it, doesn't go away. Dick believed that our perceptions of reality are subjective and malleable, and he questioned the very nature of what we consider real. His stories often featured characters who were unsure if they were living in a simulation or not, a theme that continues to resonate with audiences today. Dick's work has become a cornerstone of the simulation theory, inspiring countless thinkers to question the nature of their own existence.
Chapter 6. David Chalmers, The Consciousness Conundrum. Now let's get philosophical with David Chalmers, a philosopher of mind who's known for his work on consciousness. Chalmers argues that consciousness itself could be the key to understanding the simulation theory. He proposes that consciousness might not be a product of the physical world, but rather a fundamental aspect of reality, like space and time. If that's the case, then it's possible that our consciousnesses could be simulated even if our physical bodies aren't. It's like uploading your mind to the cloud, but on a cosmic scale. Chalmers' ideas raise profound questions about the relationship between mind and matter, suggesting that the simulation might be more about our subjective experiences than the physical world around us. Chapter 7. Tom Campbell, My Big Toe in the Matrix. Get ready for this because we're about to meet Tom Campbell, a physicist who claims to have direct evidence for the simulation theory. Campbell's theory, known as My Big Toe, Theory of Everything, suggests that our reality is a virtual reality simulation created by a larger, more complex consciousness. He claims to have conducted experiments that provide evidence for this theory, including research into out-of-body experiences, near-death experiences, and altered states of consciousness. Campbell believes that our consciousnesses are essentially players in a vast, interconnected virtual reality game, and that the purpose of our existence is to learn and evolve. His ideas are definitely out there, but they've gained a dedicated following among those who are open to exploring the fringes of science and spirituality. Chapter 8. James Gates, Error Codes in the Fabric of Reality. Hold on to your physics textbooks because we're about to talk about James Gates, a theoretical physicist who made a startling discovery. Gates found something truly bizarre while studying the mathematics of supersymmetry, a theory that suggests every particle in the universe has a superpartner. He discovered what appeared to be error-correcting codes embedded within the equations, the same kind of codes used in computer programming to prevent errors in data transmission. Gates was baffled. Why would these codes be present in the fundamental laws of physics? Could it be a sign that our universe is, in fact, a giant computer simulation? It's a question that continues to puzzle physicists and fuel speculation about the true nature of reality. Chapter 9, Max Tegmark, The Mathematical Universe. Now let's talk about Max Tegmark, a physicist and cosmologist with a truly mind-bending theory. Tegmark proposes that our universe isn't just described by mathematics, it is mathematics. He calls this the mathematical universe hypothesis. Tegmark argues that every mathematical structure that exists must also exist physically, meaning that there could be an infinite number of universes out there, each one representing a different set of mathematical equations. If our universe is just one of many mathematical structures, it's not such a stretch to imagine that it could be a simulation running on some kind of cosmic computer. Tegmark's ideas challenge us to rethink the very nature of reality and the role of mathematics in our understanding of the cosmos. Chapter 10. Scott Adams, Dilbert's Guide to the Simulation. Last but not least, we've got Scott Adams, the creator of the Dilbert comic strip. Now you might be thinking, what does a cartoonist know about the simulation theory? Well, Adams is known for his sharp wit and unconventional thinking, and he's become a vocal proponent of the simulation hypothesis. He's written extensively about his personal experiences and observations that have led him to believe we're living in a simulated reality. Adams often uses humor and satire to explore the implications of the simulation theory, suggesting that if we are living in a simulation, it's probably being run by a mischievous teenager with a warped sense of humor. His perspective adds a dose of levity to a topic that can sometimes feel overwhelming. The simulation are you in? So there you have it, 10 brilliant minds, 10 unique perspectives on the simulation theory. From Elon Musk's technological insights to Nick Bostrom's philosophical arguments, we've covered a lot of ground. The question remains, are we living in a simulation? It's a mind-blowing concept, one that challenges everything we think we know about reality. But the more we explore the possibilities, the more we realize that the simulation theory isn't just science fiction. It's a legitimate scientific and philosophical inquiry. What do you think? Is our reality just a sophisticated illusion? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe for more mind-expanding content. Stay curious, my friends.